world, huh? <laughs> I'll fit right in. Wait a minute, this is not the right Mad World. Awesome game, though. Mad World <clears throat> Age of Darkness is an isometric 2D MMORPG developed by Jandysoft that released in April of 2023. The game is fully free to play, with it being able to be played within the website's browser since the game apparently was coded in HTML5. So as long as you got an account, you can hop in from their website. The Steam client was meant to be released alongside the official game, but that got delayed all the way until January of this year, where it's received middling reviews. The game was announced quite a number of years ago with the game's brutal post-apocalyptic horror vibes being its main draw. Specifically for me, the first time I saw this game was when Kira TV dropped a video on it. He's another great MMO channel, by the way. Go drop him a sub if you can. Anyways, I finally got a chance to hop on the game and check it out to see if it was any fun. Before I logged in, though, I checked out some of the Steam reviews on their page, and man, let me just read some of them for you. Akiyama says, pay to win garbage. Nice art style, but that's all it has for it. Devs are awful human beings. Stay away from this quote-unquote game. Saitama says... <laughs> <laughs> the developer actually responded to this message. Oh my god. That is one big pile of oh. Then you have positive reviews like a damn cyber gypsy says on the other hand, don't believe the reviews. This game is fun. I'm a level 75 free to play player. The game's solid when you get used to the mechanics and stats. If you do want to try it out and learn, join North America Lucia. I can help. Squirrelbait says pretty solid game. To be honest, I don't agree with the negative reviews here. It feels a bit janky at first. You when you learn the systems, it gets much cooler. <laughs> so I was a bit divided on how to feel about this game. So after playing it, what do I think? Let's talk about it. So Mad World has actually had quite a long development history. Checking their YouTube channel, apparently things started development as early as 2018. The history of the game is basically only documented through their YouTube, and it's interesting to see how much things have changed since their original video. It looks like originally the game was going to have a major focus on being cross-platform with mobile and PC, similar to how Albion Online works. Considering Albion Online's success, I can see why the company wanted to follow that design. And obviously, spoiler alert, there is no mobile client, at least at the time of this video. Well, that sucks. What doesn't suck, though, is the game's atmosphere. Everything in terms of looks, sound, and feel capture that hellscape the developers are looking for. The world looks gritty, grimy, dirty, and bloody, which is perfect for a game that sells itself upon being a hellish demonic MMORPG. The game's music is more atmospheric usually, but it does have some surprisingly catchy beats, like the battle and boss themes. Yo, yo, yo! Ah! Moving into Mad World's story, you are a wandering soul who's lost their memory in a world filled with monsters, demons, and death. Mankind is essentially on the brink of extinction with humanity, just trying to survive on scraps in what's left of the world. You come to find as you play that you may have been someone important as you slowly unravel your memories in the story. Before all of that plays out though, you of course start with character creation. Character creation in Mad World is pretty simple, but that's honestly kind of to be expected in a 2D game. Of course, the standard choices are here, like being either male or female, face type, hairstyles, and color sliders. Small details like eye shape, brow, nose, and mouth are also customizable, but it's all really small details that realistically don't matter, especially once you get armor. Once you have named your character and decided on your desired look, you then begin a tutorial. The tutorial introduces the grim and bloody nature of Mad World. Here you learn the game's controls, combat, and story. One thing to note is a lot of people complained that the tutorial was too hard, but honestly I had literally no trouble at all fighting the tutorial boss or navigating through the tutorial. Maybe the developers made it easier, I don't know, but either way it shouldn't be a problem to anyone giving the game a try now. Once the tutorial is completed, you are introduced to your first hub town, the Dark Encampment. Here you will be able to buy items from vendors, pick up quests, cook, and overall learn more about what Madworld has to offer for its players. I'm not going to explain 
explain every single system the game has in detail because trust me, we'd be here all day. But I'll try to summarize everything. Starting with questing. The main gameplay loop that will take up your time in the beginning will be the game's storyline. The storyline plays out in an act structure similar to Diablo with each act having tons of quests to complete, bosses to fight, and maps to explore. The storyline and honestly quests in general in Mad World have some incredibly brutal or downright depressing content. The game really leans on the sense of hopelessness in the world. Many of the characters you meet are either incredibly insane or just people trying to survive. Almost all the dialogue is voice acted as well, but sadly not in English. <laughs> Obviously, while playing the story, you'll see all the gameplay features starting with combat. Combat in Mad World is essentially action combat like the previously mentioned Diablo. WASD, or clicking the left mouse button, moves you around and you can either attack or use spells with your keybinds. There is a dedicated dodge button as well as a jump button, but at least in the beginning of the game, it's not necessary. In terms of skills and character customization for combat, Mad World has some neat ideas. First is your character level, which is pretty standard. Each level grants you six stat points that you can spend in attack, defense, health, and magic. Second is your character's equipment, which can be looted from enemies. Like your standard action RPG, the loot you find will have different rarities and randomized bonus stats. Finally, the skill system has the most complexity, but probably the most problems associated with it. This is what I meant by neat ideas, but unfortunately, in my opinion, I'm not sure it was greatly executed. You see, you have several different skill types melee, ranged, magic, shield, abyssal magic, life magic, and then survival. Your survival skills are basically your professions, like mining, gathering, and cooking. The rest of them tie into your combat build. Since you can swap between two weapons in combat, each skill you set in your hotbar can be swapped to, upgraded, and leveled up to be more powerful, which adds another sense of progression. Not only are you leveling up your character and equipment, you are leveling up your skills your character uses. Skills level up by continuously using them or by finding mastery stones. You can then also enhance a skill which further increases its effectiveness. All of this sounds great on paper, but in execution, it's more complicated than it should be. First off, leveling up a skill is incredibly slow. Leveling up usually takes thousands of experience, with each use only granting about 10 experience, making the grind to level up a skill incredibly slow. Or you can just purchase mastery stones from the cash shop and just pay money to level up your skills. You gotta be f***ing kidding. Second is enhancement. Enhancing a skill can be done by having the skill stone that would teach you the skill. Once you have the stone, you can then choose to enhance it from say plus one all the way to typically plus 25. Each additional enhancement increases the skill's damage or effectiveness. The problem with enhancement is it's all based on chance. Enhancing a skill only has a 15 to 30% chance of succeeding. And if you fail too many times, you can't keep trying to enhance it unless you find or purchase a new skill. Skill stone. Enhancement also requires an item called source memories, which are dropped by enemies with the higher rarity memories, obviously being harder to acquire. Source memories can also be purchased from the cash shop, but the highest tier memories can only be earned. So while it's not overly pay to win, it's still something that can be purchased to help push your progression. Oh, and equipment can also be enhanced, but equipment doesn't hard cap you if you fail too many times. Nope, instead you might just blow up your equipment. Welcome back to Maple Story, everyone. Pets are another system the game offers where you can either purchase a pet in the cash shop or earn a free one during events. The pets offer some additional utility, like being able to be mounted during combat to provide some additional movements and other bonuses. Then there is more alternative forms of progression like the potential, costume, and collection systems. Potential is this game's skill node map similar to Path of Exile. Once you've unlocked the feature near the end of Act 1, you can start earning points that can be spent on various nodes that relate to your desired weapons. Each node grants passive stats or further boost skills used for that weapon type. The costume system is further tied into the cash shop. Essentially, a costume is a cosmetic item you can equip over your armor that grants additional stats. To get a costume piece, you need phantom spheres, which can be purchased in, you guessed it, 
the cash shop. Then to make matters worse, Phantom Spheres are essentially just gotcha loot boxes, since whatever costume piece you get awarded with is completely randomized. Now you can buy three spheres per day with gold, which is nice, or you can just buy them with real money. Yeah, and of course many of the higher rarity costume sets grant some pretty big bonuses over the lower rarity ones. Finally, the collection system is a feature that encourages you to find specific items and register them to a collection book. Completing a collection grants small passive bonus stats. The game also allows you to potentially search the game's auction house for any items you are missing or items you may want to buy from other players in general. However, the problem with the auction house is the only currency you can use to trade in the auction house is gems, which can only be acquired from the cash shop or if you happen to sell something to another player in the auction house. So I guess that's nice that you can potentially get gems by selling items to other players, but I don't really like that so many systems are tied to the cash shop. It's a shame that so much of the game's progression and features is tied to the cash shop, but I guess you could argue that a lot of it is earnable. Back to the general gameplay loop, Mad World has your basic crafting system. It has mining and gathering to collect resources that are used to create potions, cook food, or create weapons and armor, and then you have direct grilling, which is just basically cooking again. For some reason, creating potions or armor is done at vendors that can't directly directly be leveled up, so it's typically something I forgot can even be done, since the game showers you with items and loot. Cooking is really the only thing worth potentially investing in, since the food you cook can give you buffs that increase XP or stats, especially the recipes you find from enemies. <laughs> boy. So with all the progression and systems having a fuck ton of information overload, what is the point of all this? What is the game's main content to dive into after you get more and more powerful? Well, dungeons and raids where you can fight bosses are the main content to work towards. There is also PvP where you can opt into by switching from pacifist to PvP. The dungeons I played felt pretty standard where it would have you fighting waves of enemies until you got to a main boss that would drop specific loot. PvP I unfortunately didn't experience because I couldn't even find anyone around most of the time to even try it with, and based on the public rankings, PvP doesn't look like it's popular, so I don't expect to get much PvP action unless you really try to get people involved. Kill me, I'm here, kill me! I mean, yeah, kill me! Now there is another stat that sort of ties to PvP called Madness that increases as you play or increases as a drawback to using too many Mastery Stones. But as far as I could tell, what it does is eventually it does cause adverse effects if it's too high, like NPCs attacking you or having higher risk PvP. Madness can be reduced by killing monsters very, very slowly or by spending gold to cleanse it, which costs entirely too much. Of course, you can also reduce it by using the cash shop. Okay, I think it's time to actually talk about the cash shop here because at this point, it's getting really hard to avoid it. So Mad World's cash shop basically has every cardinal sin a microtransaction heavy free to play game could have. It has a seasonal battle pass, multiple currencies instead of one central cash shop currency, loot boxes, items that let you skip progression, items that grant power, and I think you get the picture. Oddly enough, there is a pseudo monthly subscription called the World Trees Blessing that grants extra XP, gold, and other conveniences. Now a subscription fee is fine if it's priced accordingly and it's not completely shafted by other items in the cash shop. But not only does the other options in the cash shop trump the monthly subscription, but the game has the balls to charge 20 bucks a month. Compare that to other MMORPGs on the market like WoW, RuneScape, Final Fantasy XIV, Guild Wars 2. Those games have much less egregious cash shops and arguably much better value in their subscription compared to the 20 bucks Mad World is asking its players to pay for its monthly subscription. Speaking of players and community, Mad World, much like the lonely hellish landscape it's going for, is pretty barren of players. I'd guesstimate the game has maybe a hundred players or so on a good day, at least on the new server I joined. At least the upside is that most players that are playing the game are 
incredibly friendly, at least from what I've seen, so the community is at least welcoming. Unfortunately, Mad World ultimately just makes me scratch my head and ask, why is this game trying to be an MMORPG? It has the bones of an action RPG with optional co-op, so why is it touting itself as an MMORPG? In all honesty, the game would have probably worked better as an action RPG with optional online co-op multiplayer for an asking price of, say, maybe 20 to 30 bucks. Many of the comments I see online praises the game's visual art style and story, but completely dunks on how its monetization is handled. Mad World could have been a decent title to check out in a weekend with friends, but sadly it comes off as a pay-to-win online game we've seen hundreds of times in the MMO genre. It sucks because there is good ideas here, but I doubt many players will really stick around for the good when it's got so much holding it back. Let's get to my final thoughts on Mad World. I think with the information overload I tried to summarize in this video, you could probably tell that there is actually a surprising amount of content, mechanics, and depth to Mad World. It's got dungeons, character build customization, multiple forms of progression, crafting, guilds, PvP, raids, etc. Can't say the game doesn't have things to do, that's for sure. Mad World has a great presentation going for it. The art style, aesthetics, voice acting, and overall atmosphere of the game is perfect for the hellish demonic landscape it's going for. The music accentuates this even further, giving the same sort of Diablo feel that we all know and love. The game is free to play with essentially the full game, able to be experienced free of charge. The game also sort of brings back something MMORPGs and old school games used to do in general, allow you to play right from their website. This is almost never seen anymore, as basically every game wants you to download their launcher to play it, but Mad World can be played right from their built-in engine on their website. Of course, that's not anything groundbreaking, but it is cool that you can do it. Finally, the game actually has a pretty decent story. Now, it does follow some cliches like you playing as the hero who has amnesia, but surprisingly, I actually did grow to like the story, which is more than I can say for most MMORPGs. Unfortunately, with the game being free to play, it is heavily tied into the cash shop. Everything from progression items items, XP boosters, battle passes, and loot boxes is here. To be fair though, a lot of things is admittedly earnable, but that argument doesn't matter if the game allows you to open up your wallet and just pay for it to get it instantly. From my footage, it probably doesn't show it too much, but the game has a very low population. They're friendly, but it's a very small community, which means PvP lovers will find a hard time finding challenges in Mad World, and based on the rankings, it looks like most people skip PvP. PvP anyways. Lastly, Mad World, in my opinion, has an identity crisis. I can understand the desire to make an MMORPG. Live service games are developed and then ran for years, making passive amounts of money through microtransactions. But I can't help but feel that this game would have been incredibly popular as a single player RPG with online co-op rather than a full on MMORPG. The story, aesthetics, and gameplay are all solid. It's just everything else that really holds the game back, unfortunately. And that's my thoughts on Mad World. Sadly, I wouldn't be surprised if this long-developed project just suddenly got shut down one day, at least the English version with its lack of population. A lot of smaller indie MMORPGs are just struggling to retain players, and I can really see this having similar problems. Anyways, what do you think of Mad World? Are you playing it? Comment down below and let me know. Don't forget to like the video to help it reach more viewers, subscribe to the channel to support my content, Follow all my social media links down below like Discord to chat with me directly. And until next video, I will catch you next time.